Okay, it's working. Um, so I'll wait just one minute so he can start real quick. Okay. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mateus. I'm from Pukehiu. Um, uh, first, I would like to to thank the, the organizers and for this nice uh, nice conference, the nice workshop. So this is the first time I, I, I've been here, so I, I've been enjoying a lot. So today I'm going to talk about this issue about seeing topological charges by naked eyes. What I mean by naked eyes is just by mani manipulating or just looking at the, the material. So this is the outline of my talk. So first I'll, I will introduce uh, uh, some experimental results for graphene. So graphene has a, a well-known opacity and we'll, uh, I'll try to relate this to a topological charge. So um, then I will argue about this topological, the affine structure constant being a, a, a topological pro topologically protected, and then I go to go through some other examples that um, we can relate the, the topological charge with uh, some topological protected uh, charge with some some. Um, okay, so um, what 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 do I mean by naked eye? So. So a lot of materials such as, uh, if you take two bar mag magnets, you can put them close together, they will either attract or repel, right? So we, s we know this comes from microscopic uh, details of material, which uh, in this case, Landau or the parameters that uh, this material will be magnetized, right? So we don't, we don't need to know that they are magnetized to just see this magnetic force a as you attract them, right? So the same thing for superconductors. You can just cool down these this superconductor materials and they will have this Meissner effect. So we, we, we just see the effect, right, with, with, with our eyes. So, so the, the question is, uh, can we actually see topological charge by similar way? We can just look at it and just, well, it, is top, uh, it has a topological charge. So um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, to argue this by looking first at gra graphene. So graphene has a very specific, uh, uh, has a exper experimentally uh, validated uh, opacity, which is uh, approximately pi times alpha, which is 2.3%. So it is independent of frequency, and it is, it is independent of polarization. Um, so how do you, you actually calculate this opacity? So it is the ratio between the absorption power and the incident power. So the, the, the incident power is, is for electromagnetism. You can see it is just E squared times some prefactors here. And, and the, um, the absorption power is you have to do some, some more work. You have to calculate the response in like this. And then you see it is uh, proportional to the, the optical conductivity in this way, and also proportional to the E0 e square, okay? So, um, so I'll try to relate the opacity of the material in, or, or in other way, the, the optical conductivity of this, the material with this thing which was in also introduced in the, the previous uh, talk, which is the quantum metric. So we start with, we start with a semiconductor, with, with the ground state of a semiconductor, which is un uh, fully anti-symmetric. And then we we construct this thing, which is the quantum the, the quantum metric. So the way I'm going to introduce the quantum metric is that we we want to look at the overlap between two states very close to each other. So we can think of these two states uh, as uh, two vectors in in the in Hilbert space, which has norm of one. So we can uh, parameterize this this the, the this overlap here by one because the the overlap can be at, at most one if it is the same state, minus some some uh, quadratic quadratic terms here in the derivatives, and the prefactor of the, the, this this guy here is exactly the the quantum metric. So if you do this calculation properly and you and you want to uh, you want that this quantum metric ha is gauge invariant, gauge invariant, and has nice properties, you have you you find this. This expression here, which can also be rewritten in using the the n states here uh, are the few states, and the m states are the the empty states. So we can write in this very nice for formula here, and also the the derivatives. So um, so 
if you if you do, for instance, uh, a firm golden rule or really a linear response theory for, to calculate this uh, this uh, connectivity here, you see that th there will be some prefactors here, and then some Fermi factors and some some uh, delta functions here, which is related to the to the en en energy conservation, and then this thing here will be exactly the quantum metric that I introduced before. So, uh, so we can uh, connect these two concepts together uh, using this, the, the, this formula here. So um, I'm, I'm going to talk about graphene. So graphene is a very well-known um, uh, material. So if you do a, a tight binding model, you see that there are two bands, and they are more or less like this. And in the low energy regime, uh, there is this linear dispersion. dispersion. And we can model the Hamiltonian by this uh, two by two Dirac, Dirac model. And um, to calculate the, the, the topological charge, we, we go, uh, we have to integrate the so-called Berry connection. So uh, we have these two points here, which is the low energy points, which are also called the Dirac uh, points. And we integrate uh, around this point. So, so if you do this, we will see that for k and k prime, they are di di they differ by, by sign, but they are uh, uh, this plus or minus one half here. Um, so this is uh, very interesting because uh, we see that uh, the uh, uh, this is a property of uh, of this. The, it is it doesn't depend on the distance from this k point. Uh, uh, it doesn't depend on the distance, right? So. Um, if you if you calculate uh, using the formula on the previous slide, if you calculate the the quantum metric here, we we see that thi this thing is c square, and this is a a, a, a result uh, from uh, which was published in 2021 called the, the metric curvature co correspondence. So it, the, the the metric curves co curvature correspondence in this case uh, says that. Uh, this guy here should uh, should be the the square root of this guy. So, but uh, you can generalize for a high order uh, uh, Hamiltonians, and it was published by my advisor uh, here. So, but to using our form of optical conductivity, we have to actually uh, make a transformation and uh, go to the uh, from the azimuthal uh, quantum metric to the to to Cartesian coordinates. So we can just do some linear algebra and we'll see that uh, it goes like this. So okay N now we, we can make the connection, right? So we have the optical conductivity which we said that uh, the the quantum matrix is, is right here. So if we put the the, the the expression for the quantum metric, we'll see that the quantum metric, the, the optical uh, conductivity will be proportional to C square, which is the, the topological charge. And um, so it, it is, in fact, hi hiding there. So if you do the calculation, you see that the, the C square must be there. Um, and if you perform this integration, you, you have some Fermi factors here, and you see that the optical conductivity is, in fact, uh, E square over H bar C square and some, some, some term that depends on the temperature. So, um, so this is very nice because uh, now we can express the express the opacity of of this uh, 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 this linear dispersion dispersion uh, like this because it's pi time, times alpha because this comes from from th this ratio here and then you have the uh, c square uh, right there. So this this is our uh, our result for graphene. But uh, if you take the, the low te temperature result, you see that we get back to the, to the experimental result, which is pi times alpha. Um, and this is, has uh, this have some uh, implications, because uh, one can just look at graphene, and, and you, you can see the topological charge. So you must be thinking, well, um, well it's just 2.3, right? Uh, but in fact, uh, it's only 2.3 because uh, c is one half, and then c square uh, cancels with the four, and then you you this terms vanish. But but the c square is there, and the the second thing is that for all to the Dirac semi metals you have the same opacity as, uh, as graphene in this case, and because uh, uh, the opacity is given by this pi times alpha times the the c square here, the fine structure constant will be pr topological protected, so. Um, 
So this is very interesting because the only other case where, where this occur is the, the von Kling's constant in quantum Hall effect. And we, we state that our paper is similar, uh, plays the same role uh, as the TK, TKNN paper that links the quantum Hall conductors to the topological uh, invariant. In this case, we, we are looking at uh, the opacity here. Okay, but um, uh, real life is, is, is a little bit different than, than perfect graphene, right? So um, when, you, when you put some, some uh, um, when we put some disorder in the material, so first of all, uh, if you are, uh, you are um, far away from the linear uh, regime, you have these Van Hoff singularities, right? And then secondly, if you have disorder, uh, the, your absorption will, will go down. So we can explain this uh, just doing some models with, uh, with local uh, disorder. And this local disorder in, lo in low frequency we will, um, will shift your chemical potential locally. And this shift in, in chemical potential will also shift the, the global chemical potential. So we can see in this, um, this diagram here that the chemical potential will be shift as you change the, the, the density of impurities in your material. Um, and this um, blocks the optical absorption. So uh, even, if, even in this case that you don't have perfect graphene, you have some disorder in the material, can you actually extract the, the, the pine structure con constant? So this, is, this has already been done. So this paper from 2008, um, they say that uh, you can actually fit the optical, um, the, the opacity of the material as a function of uh, frequency. Uh, by the, con the fine structure constant plus some beta times omega square. And you can do this in practice and you will find the fine structure constant uh, to, the, uh, to, to say, let's say two or three uh, uh, decimal places. Okay, so another issue is that uh, what if you have a, a polarized light and you are, you are, or you are, you are seeing your your material under an uh, uh, angle, right? So what we see is that the opacity will oscillate uh, with, with this angle. And if you, if you change the, 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 the frequency of the, your light, you, the oscillation will be higher or lower. And we, we, found, we find that these oscillations are of the order of 10 to 20%, and is roughly given by the, the optical hall conductance. Which is uh, so in practice, you would rotate your graphene and you see the, the opacity going up, uh, up and down. So you would see dark and lighter, dark and lighter. So this is po po uh, pos uh, possible, visible for in naked eyes. Okay. So the, the as was intro introduced by uh, Professor Kyle, and um, so we, the, to the three D topological insulators have these uh, surface states that can also be uh, modeled by a two by two Dirac model. So the, the, the implication is this: that the implication is that if you do the same analysis, you will also have the, this 2.3 percent of opacity. And moreover, because this calculation doesn't relate any properties of the material at all, so it doesn't come in play Fermi, velocity, Fermi velocities or anything. So uh, if you have different thickness of, of uh, 3D topological insulators, it should be the same opacity. So it should be, should be possible to, uh, to see this under uh, infrared uh, lens. Um, another case is for the 3D uh, vio semi-metals. In this case, we don't have a single Dirac node. We have, uh, in this case, vio nodes, we have two of them, but we can um, we can model it by uh, a linear uh, Dirac Hamiltonian, which goes like this. And we ha now have to do, we have to, to calculate the Cherry number, we have to, to calculate over the Berry curvature in this case, we, because we, we, we are in higher dimension. But uh, we have these topological charges, which is plus one or minus one if we integrate this, this thing around, uh, we, in a, let's say, a sphere around these points. And we also have a uh, uh, metric coverage, coverture correspondence, we, which is given like this. And what we find is that in this case, the, the, the optical conductivity is not, uh, con 
is proportional to, to C, but it, there is also uh, a linear term here in frequency. So, so as, we, as, we, as we increase the frequency, we, you would, we would see the material looking darker, dark and dark, and, and go, goes like this. Okay, so, so we also... So this is the number of ion nodes. So in this case, it would be two. Um, so we, so as we increase the frequency, we will, we will get darker. So we also argue, argue that this darkness is also topological protected because uh, this omega here is uh, comes together with this C, right? So this is a topological charge. So, so um, hopefully, I, I uh, so I, I had to go a little bit quickly, but that hopefully I convince you that you ha you can um, see. You actually can see topological charge by by looking at these materials by naked eyes. So, um, so for the the, the two point two graphene, you have two point three, and we we have this this opacity is topological protected, and um, the fine structure constant it does is topological protected. And then I I showed you some examples where we can also observe these the topological charges by naked eyes. Thank you for a very nice talk. I really enjoyed it. I have a, the following question. Uh, my understanding is that what you explained was for non-interacting uh, electrons, but we know many examples of strongly correlated matter which also have topological features, such as the Hall effect, quantum Hall effect, fraction Hall effect, and especially topological insulators. So uh, how, much of this, how much of what you said will carry over, and is there any way to use these arguments to detect some aspects of strongly correlated matter, like the effective mass enhancement or the coherence uh, at finite frequency and so forth. I see. Well, in the, in, uh, here, as you said, uh, we are just treating uh, non-interacting. Uh, we are in the non-interacting non -interacting case. So uh, how we would uh, transfer to, to inter the interacting, interacting case, I'm not really sure. But um, you can also calculate the quantum metric. Uh, I and if you can uh, make the connection, from the quantum metric to the optical conductivity in this case, uh, I think you can have some results in, in, this, in this direction. Whenever you have a quasi-particle description, which is also true for the fraction call effect, then probably it, it, can, it does carry over to, right, for right. most of it, I would guess, but. Right. I have two questions about the topological insulator. That it, the topological insulator, there's a there's a uh, top and bottom surface. So is it exactly twice? Because they don't move independently, the top and the bottom. In other words, is 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 the opacity twice the times two point three percent, or just one? Y yeah, in this because case, it, you say thin topological. You know, in this thing here, you're you're attributing. You, you have only one top one one times two point three percent when you go from one hundred to ninety seven point seven but I thought there was a top and a bottom yeah oh you can ask so it turns out that graphene has the uh, two point three opacity because you have two Dirac cones and two spins, whereas here you have top and bottom, and each one has one to one Dirac cone. But then you also have two spins, so it's pi alpha. They come in together, right? Exactly. Yeah. No, that's what we are proposing. Yeah. So you can just grow a 3D, 3D TI film, look at it through an infrared lens. Any thickness of them should have the same opacity. So, so you're saying that lo that slope is is essentially universal and just multiplied by some integer? Exactly, okay. exactly. So uh, it will be linear uh, in frequency, and uh, it will be just some prefactor that okay. multiply this this linear factor. Okay, great. Okay, one quick question, last question before the coffee break. 
uh, just a very quick question, because uh, the argument you're here uh, using here mostly using the optical connectivity. Right. And we know optical connectivity has a sum rule, right? Mm -hmm. It has a sum rule. And so if you have multi-band beyond two band, in principle, some of the weight could be shuffled to a higher frequency. So how do you expect, or how robust do you expect this conclusion to carry out to a multi-band system? Right, what we are proposing is just looking at uh, infrared light. So we're just looking at the, just a, a, little, a small um, uh, range of, of on the frequencies. Yeah, so. Yes, that's true. Mm. Okay, you can discuss that yeah. uh, during okay. the cough break. Yeah. We will be resuming at 11.05. I will let you know because I will call you. Let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm.